Well, hello everybody and welcome back to G-Bears Off-Grid Ways, a homestead in the desert. Here we are on March 21st, 2021. And uh, yesterday I was searching for the date, trying to remember what it was, and it didn't even occur to me it was the first day of spring. Today is the second day of spring. So, I got the new cage in here. The chicks are doing their thing inside of it, really making a mess in there, pooping everywhere. There's a couple inside of the uh, coop right now, a couple under the coop. But uh, they come in and out, they run back and forth. They come over here, eat and drink, and then go back up. And uh, right now I got this little heater running in here because it's, uh, it's only like uh, 60 degrees out. and uh, the baby chicks need to be kept closer to between 80 and 90 degrees. So I got this little heater running here because I got plenty of electricity right now. Sun's been out all day. Got to do my dishes. And I figured I'd shoot a video before I did because the sun is out, but so's the wind again. And this isn't even the wind event yet. The wind event is supposed to be coming tomorrow talking about 30 mile an hour winds again for tomorrow i don't think i've ever recalled um, in 36 37 years of coming to this desert i can't recall ever having this many days of wind in a row matter of fact i remember coming to this desert and uh, thinking to myself boy it would be nice to have a breeze and there wasn't any for days upon end but, uh, well, right now, there's wind. As you can see, all the bushes blowing. And uh, the wind is, again, predicted for tomorrow. And then a chance of rain on Tuesday. And then more wind on, wind on Thursday. So, who knows? Weird weather. Geoengineers took a break today. They're not uh, filling the sky with streaks. But... Uh, I'll bet you if they come out tomorrow, we'll have a big change in weather the next day. <laughs> Amazing how that happens. Just a guess though, right? Anyway, um, yeah, I gotta get over here and pick some things up. We had a dust devil come through, blew the barrel over, uh, bent my uh, roof edging. I've gotta still get the roof up on that uh, uh, isolation cage. It's been doing well without it, but still, it's uh, it's time to have that done. Let me get this stood up here. And I did have a, uh, a little black plastic tray sitting out here so that I could pick up eggs. And uh, one of the girls was in here laying, so I didn't pick up a little while ago, but I did give them their treats let's see what's going on in here oh yeah she's over there in the last uh, last nesting box and uh, looks like she's uh, oh there's one in there so she'll be laying number two and I guess number three will come in a little bit later so I'll check just around the time I'm uh, gonna call it a day and sit inside the cabin. So, uh, a little update on um, electricity. So, uh, there's been arguments over the year of which, which uh, voltage is better for your battery banks. And, um, I chose to go with 12 volts and the only reason I chose to go at 12 volts because was because I was coming out here cold turkey on my own and experimenting and I figured well if I go with 12 volts and there's a problem with uh, uh, charging the batteries if there's ever an emergency like um, a week with no sun or something like that I figured I would just pull my van up alongside here and put the jumper cables in there and charge all my battery banks. 
because the van, of course, is 12 volts. Well, never had to do that. So, uh, actually, my preparation, I went a little bit overboard. I overthought it. Um, I shouldn't have done that. And I should have gone with a higher voltage. Now, the question, I'm sure somebody out there is thinking right away, why would you go with a higher voltage? Just 12 volts is working fine. All right, it's simple math. So, in electricity, there's a constant called Ohm's law. That's O-H-M apostrophe S. Ohm's law basically says that uh, watts equals volts times amps. And you can reverse that equation around as we can do with all math equations. So if volts times amps equals watts, then um, watts divided by volts will equal amps. Just holds uh, true. There's, that's a constant. You can't change that law. Okay, so if um, watts divided by volts equals amps, then higher voltage means lower amps. Hey, are you following me on that? So what that means is, let's take some really simple numbers that'll make it really easy to explain and understand. Okay, let's say you have a 120 watt bulb and you have 120 volts of electricity. Well, since we know that in Ohm's law, watts equals volts times amps, then we can also say that um, amps equals watts divided by volts. So if we have 120 volts, 120 watts, 120 goes into 120 one time. So to light that bulb, you're gonna use one amp of electricity. That's that simple. Okay, so now let's take it to a step further. Let's lower the voltage and say you have 12 volts and you have a 120 watt bulb. You want a light with 12 volts. So it would be 12 into 120, which is 10. So it would take 10 amps at 12 volts to light that same 120 watt bulb. You see where I'm going here? It takes 10 times the amount of um, electricity or amps to light the same bulb when your voltage goes lower. So you can do the same thing with um, if you just went to 24 volts. So you would half that, cut it in half, and that would be five amps to light the same bulb. And if you went to 48, so 48 would be four times, uh, four into the 10. So uh, four to 10 divided by four, so it would only take two and a half amps. So the constant is there because of Ohm's law. So higher voltage means less amps are going to be used. So if I had my setup right now swapped over to 48 volts, I would use, be using a lot less amperage. And the other nice thing about that is the lower the amperage, the smaller the wire size required to go over distances. So it would work out in a great advantage to someone on solar to go with higher voltages. All right, I hope that um, helps you understand. Now, for those of you who are already set up with 12 volt systems, don't go out to your battery banks and start crossing them over and uh, rewiring them into 48 volts a setup because you're not going to be able to do that without changing your um, uh, controllers and your uh, inverters and that stuff. Okay, that, that all would have to be changed also. If you've got a 12 volt inverter, 12 to 120 volts right now, then you can't connect 24, 36, or 48 volts to it. Now, on solar panels, it wouldn't make a difference that since I've upgraded and got the high-end controllers like the Midnight Classic 150 is what I'm, what I'm using, and I will be getting another one of those to 
um, control the uh, PMA because they're just more efficient. They're expensive, but they really make a difference in efficiency. And uh, they last longer because they're built right to do what they're supposed to do. But in your solar panels, let's get back to that, you can hook these up in series and increase the voltage on them because a lot of the controllers, don't try this with a cheap Chinese controller, you'll probably blow it up. But if you hook the, your panels in series, then what you're gonna do is increase the voltages, but not the amps, okay? So your voltages are gonna go up, but your amps are gonna stay down. So your watts will be the same. So here I got 1,220 watts because they're 305 watt panels each, four of them, okay? So they're at 9.85 amps each. And I've got these um, in series. So they're jumping up the voltage on there. And uh, I'm putting out uh, 80 volts on this one at 19.7 amps. And if you multiply those two together, you'll get 1220, okay? So, or somewhere close to that. So that's what's going on here. The, uh, the voltage, the higher voltage is going into my controller, but the controller steps it down to 12 volts to charge my battery bank. Uh, if it was stepping it down to just 48 volts, which the controllers I have will do that, uh, they will handle any voltages. That's why you hook the batteries up first to your um, controller, because that tells the controller what your battery bank voltage is. So you hook your batteries up first, the controller reads that voltage and sets itself to handle that voltage. And then you hook your solar panels in, in series, and you put higher voltage into your system. And uh, hey, you got a really efficient setup. Uh, the Classic 150 will handle up to 150 volts plus the voltage of your batteries. So I, would, I could handle 162 volts going into one controller. Now, if I got the Classic 200, that would hold 200 uh, volts coming in. The 250 would take 250 volts going in plus the battery voltage. So if I had 48 volts, and I was using a classic 250, that would take 298 volts of input without a problem. Okay, so voltage goes up and efficiency goes up. So just wanted to cover all that for all of you. I'm going a little bit long on this. I'm gonna shut it down and go in and upload it and get ready to make some dinner or supper, whatever you wanna call it. And uh, thanks for joining me. This is G-Bear signing off.